Hey, welcome back. This video is a quick demonstration on how to do cluster random sampling for research using our trusty coin population. Cluster random sampling is another example of probability sampling wherein the population is divided into different clusters. You can define a cluster as a collection of elements in this case, sampling units are based on a particular feature, and the most commonly used theme to cluster a population is geographic locations such as country or city of residence. We use cluster random sampling if we think that each cluster is composed of different elements which are more or less a microcosm representation of the entire population. Let's say our study objective is to determine whether our coin population likes bananas or pajamas. Most likely, we need to conduct a survey to ask them about their preference. Let's meet our simplified coin population. Our coin population consists of 18 big dots and 27 small silvers. Each of these big dots and small silvers will be our sampling unit. The coins are well distributed and mingle with each other all over our study area, which is this entire green board. These coins will also form our population sampling frame, which consists of a total of 45 coins, which we will call N. You may watch my previous video on definition of sampling terms, and link is in the description below. Also, for the purpose of this demo, let's say the calculated sample size for our study is 10. We start cluster random sampling by first defining our cluster. Let's say some of the coin population lives in the upper left corner of the green board, and a few of them live in the upper right, a few live in the lower left, while the rest live in this lower right region. We opted to use cluster sampling because we don't have the resources to go to all four clusters, but we can probably get to at most three clusters. In cluster sampling, it is usually advised to adjust your calculated sample size to account for possible homogeneity within or heterogeneity between clusters. A common strategy is to double the calculated sample size to get our effective sample size. So the effective sample size in our study will be 20. The next step is to assign sequential numbers to each cluster. So we can call the upper left cluster as cluster 1, then the upper right as cluster 2, the lower left as cluster 3, and the lower right as cluster 4. The next step is where the randomization comes in. We perform simple random sampling to select which cluster or clusters we will include in our study. You can watch my video on simple random sampling if you want a refresher. Since we have resources for at most three clusters, and we can more or less get to our effective sample size if we get two or more clusters, we generate three random numbers between one and the total number of clusters, which is four. Say we get the random numbers three, one, and two. We then investigate our first random cluster, cluster three. All 10 sampling units in cluster three will then be included as our study samples. At this point, we only have 10 samples, but we need 20. So we go to the cluster corresponding to our next random number, which is cluster 1. And again, take all sampling units there, all 12 of them, as part of our study. At this point, we already reached our effective sample size of 20. In fact, we have 22 total samples, 10 coming from cluster 3 and 12 coming from cluster 1. So we can end our cluster sampling. These 22 coins will be the ones who will get to participate in our survey. This particular technique is called single-stage cluster sampling. Cluster sampling is often confused with stratified sampling, and this is clarified in my other video on what is the difference between stratified versus cluster sampling. You may also want to view my video on stratified sampling first. All links are in the description below. And if you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, and comment below. That is how we do cluster random sampling.